Around here on the Purple Alphabet, I like to give you guys ideas and inspirations for some really easy activities you can do at home that involve a little bit of learning too. And today I'm gonna do just that. Went over to Dollar Tree, found this roll of craft paper, and I'm gonna show you some great activities that you can do using this. Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from the Purple Alphabet. This is an item at Dollar Tree. It only costs a dollar. It is the craft paper. I found it over in the learning section where they put all the poster boards, but I've also seen this back in the gift wrap section, so keep an eye out for it. It is a great find. It's called the Craft Paper Roll by Jot, and it's 30 inches by 15 feet. So I thought, what better tool or supply to make some activities for your kids? And I'm gonna give you some ideas in this video. If you like these budget-friendly activities, I have a whole Bunch more. So I want to put a couple more down below in the description box so you can watch it after you watch this video. Let's get on to some great ideas using our craft paper. All of the activities I'm going to show you just take one roll of this craft paper and depending on how big you cut it you could probably even do more than what I'm showing you in this video. So my plan is to show you a couple of ideas that you can use. You can always adapt them to what level your child is at. So I'm going to roll out a piece here. I'm using some painter's tape just to tape it onto my floor and like I said you can cut these to any size you want. The first activity we have is a caterpillar number dot. I actually saw this one somewhere on Instagram. I wish I could remember who or where I saw it, but you just draw with a black Sharpie or a marker, a little caterpillar, do a little head and the antenna, and then you can add the body part. So make a couple of these caterpillars all over the paper and each one's gonna have a different number of body parts. And then I'm drawing a line here so that my child could write in how many there are. And that part is obviously optional depending on the level of your child. If they are ready to count and write numbers, you can do it that way. But if they're not writing numbers yet, you can leave that part off. So I went ahead and drew several all over the paper and I'm making the circles big enough to use some do a dot markers. Now the do a dot markers I like are actually the scented ones. They come in so many different colors right now. So I'm gonna put a link down below in my description box that will take you to a couple of my favorites. But I've had these scented ones for a long time now. They're the ice cream dessert ones and they smell so good. Each one has a different scent. This one right here is very berry for the purple. And what you're gonna have your child do is fill in the dots do a dot for each one on the caterpillar and this is a counting activity. Like I said, if you're not into writing the numbers yet, you don't have to write in the number on the line. You can just use it as a counting activity. You can use different colors. You can make patterns and change this into a patterning activity if you'd like as well. Next up, I have a follow the line activity. So on one side of the paper, I went ahead and wrote the numbers one through four. And on the other side, I just put some symbols and these can be whatever you would like. And you can even go higher if you want, but it will take your child some time to do this. If you're just starting off, you might wanna just start with one line. Then I went ahead and drew from the numbers all the way to the symbols like a maze. I did different kinds of lines. I did curved lines. I did a zigzag line. I did a straight line. And like I said, if you're just starting off on this, just be simple and start with one line because you don't wanna to get too complicated. And for the kids that are a little bit older, you can add a couple more. Next, get out those stickers. I have a ton and I'm sure you do too. If you don't, Dollar Store is the place to get them. So I have a whole package of stickers here that I can choose from. The best ones that work are the smaller ones, like these little butterflies that I have here. They will work really well because we are going to trace the line with the stickers. Now the great thing about this activity is that you're working some fine motor exercises just taking off the stickers from the backing. That really works those muscles. If your child is having some trouble taking them off, always take off the little backing that help. This one right here doesn't have that issue because they're all kind of stuck together. But that's a common tip that a lot of people use. So the task is to start at a number. We're gonna start on line one and to place the sticker all the way across the line until we get to the end. So we're doing a lot of fine motor work here, dexterity in the fingers, working to get that sticker off the sheet and then also following the line as we go across. This is almost like a pre-writing exercise because we're learning to go from left to right and then we're also following the line. If you haven't tried this activity before, this is a great thing to try. It's the giant 10 frames. So I am drawing a giant 10 frame, actually two of them on the paper, really, really big. Now, a lot of times I show you guys activities with 10 frames and I have some store-bought ones, but this is a great way to do it, just simple with paper 
and a marker. So I'm giving each box 10 different boxes and I'm using 10 frames because we're gonna be doing addition problems. I'm also using these flashcards, they're addition flashcards. They come from the dollar store, which is a great place to get them. And then I'm using these plus plus counters as manipulatives, but you could use Legos, you could use counting chips, you could use counting bears, whatever you have at home. This activity is very simple. I'm just going to do the four on the top for the top of my flashcard plus the nine in the bottom frame. Then I'm going to add them up all together to get my answer. So I'm using the 10 frames here for addition, but if you're not into addition yet, you can use this as counting. Just do one 10 frame and then place a number card or an index card that you've created yourself off to the side and count out four. And then do the next one, count at nine. Or if this is too easy, you can even do it for subtraction if you wish, or even larger math problems. Using 10 frames is part of learning base 10. I have a video about base 10 that I'm gonna put up here in the corner for you to take a look after this video if you're interested in learning more about that. This is a really great way to demonstrate visually an addition problem or even when you're learning to count. Next up, I have a blank sheet of paper and we are gonna be doing a shadow match. I'm sure you guys have probably seen this one floating around Instagram or on Pinterest and it's very simple. I have some wooden blocks here. You can use many different things that you have around the house and I'm just tracing around the object and placing them sporadically across my paper. So this one is so simple to set up and so easy yet so effective. It's just like making your own puzzle. Once you have this all set up, I would place all the objects off to the side. Of course, if you're just starting off, don't go too crazy. Only have a couple of different shapes. It's totally okay. And then you match the shapes to the drawings on the picture. If you wanted to, you can make it a little bit more difficult by adding color. I just used black lines, but you can make each one match to the corresponding block color to make it even more engaging and learning your colors. It's a couple different variations you can do on this. You can even graph these after you're done to see how many of each different type of block you have. That's just one way that you can extend such a simple activity. Starting off with another blank sheet of paper, taking my black marker here to create number bubbles. So I'm going to use five different bubbles for this. You can go on up to 10. You can do less. You can just do two numbers if you want. And then you're going to place numbers inside to label them. I'm just drawing them right smack dab in the middle here, really, really large. And then you're going to need some objects. So what we're going to be doing is counting objects and placing that correct number of objects in the number bubble or the number circle. I happen to to have those blocks out so that's what I'm going to use to put in here but you can use anything like Legos or mega blocks you can use household items that are all different you can use counting chips those bears those would work really really great I think I might have said Legos Legos would also be a great addition to this so what you're working on is counting quantity and relating it to the number symbol you can go as high as you want to which is another great activity on doing this because you can count all of those blocks and put them inside a higher number 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 bubble. This also works in counting down. You can start off with that many blocks inside your number bubble and then remove them as you count to put them away. Let's try another one, letter tracing. I'm gonna put three letters on here. Just ignore the bottom because my paper is smaller. And I have those same plus plus blocks from before, but like I said, you can use other objects, counters, bears, Legos, stickers even. And this time we are tracing the actual letter. So this helps with your pre-writing skills and recognizing a letter formation. This is probably best done before you actually know your letters. Once again, pincer graphs, fine motor work, lining it up on the line and recognizing those letters. What's great about plus plus blocks is that they actually interlock together. So if you wanted to, you could actually form the letter using the plus plus blocks. You can do as many letters as you like. I highly recommend limiting this to just a few letters or just one letter that you may be working on at the time. Next up, this one definitely has to be my favorite. This one is a town play map, and I love this because you can make it very interactive. I would suggest just setting out the boundaries. So what I'm doing is drawing in the roads and leaving some space for buildings or other play space. So you can make this as large as you want. You could use the whole roll of paper if you wanted to, but I'm gonna draw in some roads here. 
just to get the kids started. Next, you can have them do the next part, which is to draw in all the missing pieces, the houses, the buildings, the post office, the bank, the library, the school, whatever you might wanna put in your neighborhood, maybe some trees, maybe some flowers, and they can do this part and have fun decorating all of the land pieces. If this is too difficult for your child and they're not quite there yet, you can of course do this for them. That would be a lot of fun just to decorate it and how it looks in your neighborhood. Next up, give them some, some matchbox cars would work great with this, trains even, uh, motorcycles. I happen to have some wooden cars that I got at the Target dollar section, would work really well to put this in a real life scenario. You can also put Lego buildings on here and use Lego minifigures to have some people in your town. I really like this one because it's highly creative, highly adaptable. Your kids can join in the fun and create in it and you can make it as big as you want and then after you can play on it for several more hours and do imaginative play. If you like videos like this I'm going to put one up here on the screen for even more ideas so you can get inspired too. Remember to click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.